just want to do something. All right. Question number two. How do I send Q&A questions? Well, either email me at avgrer. At, yeah, I'm sorry, avgrer at gmail.com, or you can personal message me here on YouTube. And question number three, what's the most forgotten video game you ever played? Now, by uh, most forgotten, do you mean uh, the game I've, uh, I have I thought was the worst, or nobody else had remembered? i got to say, the most forgotten video game, the one that just pff, I couldn't stand, hmm, that's a very good question. And I've got to say, probably Godzilla for the NES. Um, I remember I rented that once. I couldn't figure out the heck system, so I spent the whole time trying to figure out how to get into the game, and it was just horrible. And if you mean the most forgotten game I've ever played that nobody else would remember, but I hold near and dear, General Chaos for the Sega Genesis. Awesome game, published by EA. Go check it out. It's a cool game. And uh, did I know you can plug in a USB keyboard to the back of your Wii and use it for writing messages? Yes. Yeah, they added that functionality in one of the updates. It was finally nice to be able to do that. Great questions. Kite198. Okay, FC Movies. Um, do I think the Dreamcast had a DVD player that it wouldn't have been discontinued? I don't think that would have made any difference. Um, believe me, the Dreamcast was ahead of its time. I owned one at the time and loved it, and I now got it back, and I've got... Uh, a lot of the great games I had then, and one I didn't, Shinmu, which I always wanted to have. A friend of mine did. I didn't, but now I do. Um, I don't think that would have made any difference. The graphics on, on the PlayStation were coming out, and that was the era when the graphics, you know, the bit number for everything was... was I mean, heck, look at Nintendo's N64. That was the competition at that time. That was all about... Well, closing into the competition, that was about the 64-bit, you know. So the graphics were the main thing in that era, not the gameplay. Although, sadly, the Dreamcast had a ton of great games in its short lifespan and had remarkable online ability. I mean, look back at the Sega Saturn. It had a net link. You could phone call two Saturns together across the U.S., and you can still do this. It still works because it wasn't relying on any service and play games. I've seen on forums online for just posts that were months old, of people that had gotten on and played Duke Nukem together. You know, it, Sega was ahead of their time. Sega Channel. I used to have the Sega Channel. It was incredible. But, sadly, people that are ahead of their time often um, just, you know, fade away because nobody will buy it. I don't know how Apple does it, but they're getting people to do it. If Sega were making hardware today, I think they're, they might be back. You know what I'm saying? They made a Dreamcast too, but I doubt we'll ever see one. All right. Do I play a lot of PC games or mostly console games? Uh, it varies. Uh, most of the time, I'm playing uh, PC games. I have the, you know, once in a while, uh, I do pop in a console. I have several old consoles and stuff here to play, uh, and and new ones as well. But majority of the time, I am a PC gamer at heart and have been for years now. All right. Question three. Your videos are so professional. Well, thank you. Any tips on how to make a good professional video? Well, one thing I must say is that you have to watch a lot of videos. And no, I don't mean mine all the time. I'm not trying to up my views or anything by saying that. What do I mean by that? Well, I once was reading a book by Orson Scott Card. He's got Road Ender's Game and the many sequels to that. Great series of books, by the way. I recommend you pick them up if you like sci-fi. Anyways, uh, he said in there, one way, it was, the book was over writing fantasy and fiction. And one way to write fantasy and fiction is to read a lot of fantasy and fiction. And I didn't get him at first, but I got him. Because you pick up ideas. That's where ideas begin. So what you should do if you want to make a good video is to watch not only my videos, but watch my competitions. I, I wouldn't call it competitions, but watch like the Angry Nerd, the Irate Gamer, and all them other guys. Um, or, you know, even if you're not making videos like these, if you want to make a video of whatever, watch people that have made it already. You'll pick up on small clues when you're watching them objectively. It's one thing to watch and enjoy, that's great, but if you watch a movie just to see how it's made, watch it frame by frame, and just kind of decipher it, it's, it's neat. It's cool as heck. One instance, I was watching a nerd video, and I noticed he had a game playing on his TV screen. I was wondering, well, how did he get it to look so clear? And then I figured it out. He was using blue and green screen chroma key technology. That's right, the screen was just displaying view, blue, but at the same time, he had like a, uh, you can see the blue in his arm and everything. So that was going on. So that's how you figure those things out. And that's what I recommend, is just watch how other people have done it, and then you watch it. 
All right, everybody. This has been a great Q&A. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, music supplied by uh, uh, the Flight of the Concords. I recommend you pick up their CD. It is just incredibly fun. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms and ladies out there in the world. Good gaming, everybody. Just want to do something special for all the ladies in the world. And the girls, don't forget them. Caribbean. Girls. Lady. Parisian.